Imagine a massive hunt launched by the Soviet Union, not for a foreign enemy vessel, but for one of their own warships. This wasn't a training exercise or a case of mistaken identity. This is the story of a Soviet warship known as the Storozovoy. Let's uncover the secrets behind this dramatic event and see what made a Soviet warship turn into a hunted rebel. The Storozovoy was one of the Birovestnik's class frigates. Known for their speed and agility, these ships were 123.5 meters long, had a beam of 14.1 meters, and a drought of 4.6 meters. The Storozovoy was commissioned into the Soviet Navy in 1972 to 73, a period marked by significant naval expansion and modernization in the Soviet Union, aimed at bolstering its maritime capabilities against NATO forces. The primary role of the Storozovoy and its sister ships was anti-submarine warfare. They were equipped with weapons such as torpedo tubes, anti-submarine rockets, and surface-to-air missiles for defense against aerial threats. The frigate served in the Baltic Fleet and was involved in various naval exercises and patrol missions. The ship operated in the Baltic Sea and occasionally ventured into the Mediterranean and Atlantic Oceans for broader strategic operations. The frigate was part of routine deployments, showcasing Soviet naval presence and participating in goodwill visits to Allied ports. For instance, the ship visited ports in East Germany, the Mediterranean, and Cuba, reflecting the Soviet Navy's extended reach during the Cold War. In November 1975, the Soviet Navy faced an internal crisis when a mutiny broke out aboard the Storozovoy. The mutiny was led by the ship's political commissar and captain of the third rank. Valery Sablin, who wished to protest against the rampant corruption of the Leonid Brezhnev era. He aimed to seize the ship and steer it out of the Bay of Riga to Leningrad through the Neva River. He planned to moor alongside the historic ship Aurora, a symbol of the Russian Revolution, and broadcast a message to the entire nation. Sablin wanted to speak the truth that people were thinking but were afraid to say out loud that socialism and the motherland were in danger, the rulers were corrupt and deceitful, and the country was headed for disaster. He wanted to revive the principles of justice and equality that Lenin believed in. On the evening of November 9, 1975, Sablin lured the captain to the lower deck, claiming that some officers needed to be disciplined for being drunk on duty. When the captain arrived at the lower deck, a fistfight ensued in which Sablin detained the captain and the other officers in the forward sonar compartment and seized control of the ship. Sablin then summoned a meeting of all the senior officers on the ship. During this meeting, a vote was taken among the 15 officers present. Sablin informed the officers that he planned to steam to Leningrad and broadcast his revolutionary message. Eight officers voted in favor of the mutiny while the remaining seven senior members of the ship's crew who did not wish to go along with the plan were brutally beaten and locked in a separate compartment below the main deck. Sablin then moved on to the next phase of the plan, which was to win the support of the seamen, numbering about 145 to 155 men. Sablin was a popular officer, and he used this to his advantage. He assembled the crew and delivered a speech that instantly motivated and excited all the seamen about a revolution. One of the officers who had voted in favor of the mutiny escaped under the cover of night and ran across the naval deck to raise the alarm. However, the guard at the gate did not believe him. Upon discovering that they might soon be detected, Sablin decided to move immediately rather than wait until the morning to set sail with the rest of the fleet as originally planned. The crew immediately sailed under the cover of darkness and made their way out of Riga. Sablin also ensured that the radar was off to avoid detection by Soviet forces. Once the mutiny was discovered, the Soviet government, fearing the loss of military secrets, ordered the destruction of the Storozovoy. The Soviet Navy dispatched a substantial portion of the Baltic fleet to catch the frigate. This included 13 naval vessels comprising fast attack boats and missile boats. The frigate's advanced capabilities, including its anti-submarine armament, made its potential defection a significant threat, prompting such a large-scale response. In addition to the naval vessels, around 60 warplanes were involved in the pursuit. This included IL-38 patrol planes and Tu-16 bombers. Notably, the operation also saw the deployment of Yak-28 bombers, which bombed the vicinity of the Storozovoy. 
and strafed it with cannon fire. This was a rare instance of the Yak-28 being used in an aggressive military action. As the mutineers tried to reach Leningrad, the Soviet military launched a coordinated hunt involving naval and air units. Colonel General Sergei Golyaev, the commander of naval aviation for the Baltic fleet, played a critical role in the pursuit. Multiple attack attempts were made, but either missed or were aborted at the last moment. During the operation, the Soviet forces struggled with poor visibility and the need to avoid collateral damage. The situation reached a critical point when Goleyev ordered a missile attack on the Sorozovoy. Fortunately, the crew who were initially supportive of Sablin managed to overpower him and declared their surrender before any missiles were launched. Despite receiving the surrender signal, the commanding officer of the strike mission, thus preventing further bloodshed and the possible destruction of the warship. The planes and ships eventually managed to damage the Starozovoy, specifically its steering mechanism, causing it to stop dead in the water before it could reach Swedish territorial waters. After the mutiny, significant actions were taken against those involved. Valery Sablin, the main instigator, was tried for high treason. He was convicted and executed by firing squad on August 3, 1976. His second-in-command, Alexander Sheen, received a prison sentence and was released after eight years. The remaining crew members involved in the mutiny were dishonorably discharged from the Soviet Navy, but were not subjected to further legal penalties. The Soviet government heavily suppressed the true story of the mutiny, initially portraying it as an attempted defection to the West. This misrepresentation was intended to control the narrative and prevent any potential spread of dissent. However, the details eventually surfaced thanks in part to investigative efforts and the eventual openness following the end of the Cold War. The Starozovoy itself continued to serve in the Soviet Navy after the mutiny. Initially part of the Baltic Fleet, the ship was transferred to the Pacific Fleet in early 1976. It underwent several routine maintenance periods and continued its operational duties until it was decommissioned in June 2002. The vessel was eventually sold to India for scrap. The mutiny led to increased vigilance and stricter controls within the Soviet Navy. It underscored the need for the Soviet military to maintain tighter control over its personnel to prevent similar incidents. This event highlighted the fragility of the Soviet military structure and the potential for internal rebellion which had significant implications for Soviet military policy and internal security measures. Internationally, the incident drew attention to the potential for dissent within the Soviet military, a factor that Western analysts considered significant during the Cold War. The Soviet response to the mutiny showed the regime's sensitivity to any form of defection or public dissent, especially from within its armed forces. One of the most notable cultural impacts of the mutiny was its inscription for Tom Clancy's novel, The Hunt for Red October. The book and its subsequent film adaptation drew heavily from the real-life events surrounding the mutiny. Gregory D. Young's master thesis, Mutiny on the Starozovoy, a case study of dissent in the Soviet Navy, was a crucial source for Clancy. And that's all for the story of the Starozovoy mutiny. It was a wild chase and a reminder that even the mightiest forces can face surprises. History is full of untold stories. If you know more tales like this, share them in the comments below. Subscribe for more content like this.